When I lived with my mum in a fairly populated school area, I used to walk everywhere. I was late getting my driver's license and I just didn't like buses. Plus walking was healthy and I really liked going for random rambles around the area. I must have been 19 walking home from work when this happened. There was a one-way street on my walk home and I used to walk the opposite direction to the cars. It was fairly quiet usually, not many people around, and it was getting to around twilight, dusk. I just finished a closing shift at work and was a bit out of it, just looking forward to going home and relaxing for the rest of the night, which is why I didn't really clock the woman opposite me on the pavement for a little while. Eventually, I looked up from my phone, presumably satisfied with my Spotify pick at last, and noticed her. Because it's so quiet, I get a little nervous when I see another person walking close to me, or near me, and I sped up. She didn't, so I turned back and looked at her, and my stomach just dropped. I remember a feeling of just getting intense dread like a stone in my insides. She had no face, not like a void, not black, just skin stretched over, with no indents where eyes or mouth should be. And yet, she was looking right at me. I don't know how I could tell, but I did. I froze. I was about five minutes sprint away from home and I couldn't move. She stared at me for what felt like hours, but was probably seconds. And this is the bit that terrified me. She pointed right at me with a withered looking hand, long nails almost clawing at me. Then she raised her other hand to her lips as if to, as if to shush me. And then she disappeared, just gone. I stood there for a long time, trying to work out A, what the fuck, and B, how to make my legs work again. I never saw her again, but I keep catching something in the corner of my eye, and it reminds me of her, and I am freaked the fuck out. My first paranormal experience was when I was about seven or eight. My brother and I decided to walk to our friend's house, which was about a hundred yards down the back alley. I'll give a little history of our town. I grew up in a small country town called Pine Grove in Pennsylvania. It is the typical small town where everyone knows everyone. We would play outside every day, especially in the summer, and our best friends lived right down the street. There is a main street that goes through the entire town which we lived off of. But there was an alley that went right past the back of our house. Me and my brother's friends lived down the alley about a football field away. Back to the story. My brother and I started getting closer to our friend's house and we see this man by the stop sign at the end of the alley. The stop sign is past our friend's house around 150 yards away. He looked like what I would picture God looking like. White man, silky white pants and shirt. As we get closer, my heart starts pounding faster and I realize he is floating and not walking. My brother saw it too and said he is floating and we start running. This thing looked at us at this point and he was about a hundred yards away from us and he literally had no face just blank, blurred face, no eyes, nose, no nothing. We had reached our friend's house and they were asking why we looked so scared. We told them what happened and the boys rode their bikes around the neighborhood but saw nothing that fit our description. 
I still to this day have no idea what the heck it was, but it still makes my heart race as I am typing this. Any ideas on what it could be? I was about nine when this happened. My brother and I shared a room. I had the top bunk and he slept on the bottom. We went to bed together at the same time every night. It was a routine. My mum bought me one of those infomercial train alarm clocks and I had it set up next to my bed. Every morning I would wake up, look at the clock tower on the alarm clock, turn off the alarm and get up for school. It was a school night. I was laying in bed playing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for Game Boy Advance and happy as any other kid could be. My mother came into my room and told my brother and I to go to sleep, so we did. I would sometimes wake up early in the morning to pee, so I'd slide my legs over the side of the bunk bed and hop down, running upstairs to the bathroom. Our bedroom was in the far end corner of a finished basement. My dad used to play music when he pooped, so it was normal hearing music coming from the bathroom. That's how you knew dad was in there. On this particular night, I heard the faint melodies of Gary Newman's Cars playing and it comforted me. The song ended but then replayed itself. That song was on repeat for maybe 40 minutes. My dad always had a playlist of some random cool 80s songs. He burned on a CD playing. So it was very weird to hear the same song playing over and over like that. I went upstairs to check it out and the bathroom door was cracked open with the light seeping through the slight opening. I opened the door and no one was there. Just that song playing. I turned off the stereo and turned out the light. As soon as I got back to my bedroom, I heard the song come back on. It didn't make sense because I had never had anything like this happen to me before. I got a strange gut feeling. So I ended up having to wake up my dad and have him turn it off. The next night was a little different. My brother and I went to bed as usual and I was woken up with the same damn urge to pee like the night prior. I turned over and looked over at the clock tower. 2 a.m. it read. Pretty early, I thought. I leaned to my left and lifted my leg over the side of the bed when I suddenly came to a stop. I was frozen. I couldn't move. My body was completely paralyzed with half of my right leg over the side of the bunk bed. There on the floor was a boy. He was sitting in a fetal position, holding his knees to his chest. His skin was blue, but it had a strange ominous glow to it. He had on what looked like a bathrobe that was all black. His knees were tucked into it and his arms were supporting them. His face was long, with two empty spaces for eyes. No definite shape, just deep voids where his eyes should be. He didn't have a nose or a mouth. He was shivering, holding his limbs close to himself. I could hear my brother lightly snoring beneath me, and I was terrified for his safety. I had thousands of thoughts racing, nothing coming close to any sort of explanation to what I was seeing. I wanted to scream and cry at the same time, but I was frozen, frozen in that same spot. I finally gained some sort of strength and pulled my leg up, which startled him. He turned his head in an unnatural way and started looking at me. He was just staring at me. I couldn't see his eyes, but I knew they were there, like looking into a well to try to see the bottom. I looked at him for what felt like two hours. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak or properly breathe. I was stuck. The boy eventually looked away from me. 
It was a calming feeling once he looked back at the wall. At least I wasn't getting his attention anymore, I thought. The only thing I could think to do was slowly move myself under my covers and try to just hide, so I did. I lightly and carefully shuffled beneath my covers and turned towards the wall, eventually falling asleep. The next morning he was gone, no sign of him there or leaving. I told everyone I know about him, and most of my friends and family believed me. To this day, I haven't forgotten him. It's been 19 years, but I can still see him as clear as day in my mind. Seeing that entity sparked a lifelong search for the paranormal. Something that will help me to understand what I saw. I'll never know what I saw. Back when I was maybe 16, I was home alone on a rainy day. On this day I felt particularly terrible despite the rain and couldn't bring myself to sit still. So I kept pacing the house, going in and out of the fridge, doing your typical bored at home stuff. On my way back from my 50th trip to the kitchen, I heard my cat growling. I looked over to his cat tree that sits in front of the window and saw him with his back arched, fur standing up, tail puffy. Full-blown rage going on. I figured maybe there was another animal in our driveway or on the sidewalk or something. I walked over to see what he's growling at and notice a man standing just before the end of the driveway. He was wearing a black suit that looked totally dry dress shoes as clean as can be, and he had no face. He wasn't physically unusual other than that, and the weird dark grey film that was faintly around him. Despite him not having a face, I knew without a doubt that he was staring at me. I could feel it. This horrible fear crept up my spine. I was frozen and we just stared at each other for a while. Suddenly a shiny 1940s black Cadillac, a car that no one in my neighborhood has, drove by going towards the main street. As it passed, I watched the man fade into it, like he was suddenly on the other side of the street, and he was gone. My cat, who was enraged the entire time this was happening, began to settle down, but was obviously confused on where the man went. He darted around the house, still somewhat agitated, looking out the windows trying to find him. I didn't know what to do or think. I had no influence to have my mind make it up, as this was before I had heard of Slender Man and before I heard of the men in black. And I was so afraid that he'd come back later to get me. It wasn't until years later that a friend I told explained the men in black to me and that he doesn't know why that man appeared to me or how I'm still alive. Not a very fun thing to hear, especially with how paranoid I used to be thanks to other weird occurrences in my life. I never saw the man or anything like him ever again after that day and I'm honestly so grateful for that. I still don't know how to feel about it. I want to preface that I did not see any of this, mostly due to my vantage point, but I was in the room with her. Roughly an hour ago, my wife and I were talking on our couch. Her seat allows for a peripheral view of one of our sets of half stairs. As I was saying something, she immediately jumps up and within a few seconds says she saw a kid, not one of our two walking down the stairs and that is what spurred her sudden movement. Where I was sitting is essentially back to the stairs but I lined up the shot. Even if I had been facing that way the wall would have blocked it. Details according to her as she tried to recall specifics of something she saw for two-ish seconds. At the moment of realization of the figure she felt a blanket was placed on her 
attempting to tell her, no, this is just your son, don't worry. But her internal instinct piped up and told her not to let this thing get behind her. Ironically, if that was its goal, I would have certainly seen it. If I am in fact capable of such things. It was lanky, possibly 2D, but almost spindly, like a spider, with knee joints resembling that of a spider. It had clothing on, unsure of exactly what, but it was wearing something. She saw it move, hand on the banister. The leg movement was similar to how our youngest kiddo comes down the stairs, just a bit more overreaching, like it had to force itself to do so. Its face was almost purely white and had absolutely no facial features. She tried to rationalize it immediately and failed to do so. Since I did not see it, I am forced to look at my conditions and do my best to reconcile it in my head, mostly so I can get some sleep tonight. The lighting wasn't terrible on the stairs. There are eight stairs and at the top we have a night and at the top we have a nightlight wall outlet. She said that it was on the third from the top, stepping down the fourth from the top. The downstairs light illuminates it fairly well. The downstairs light illuminates it fairly well. I cannot chalk this up to the dark corridors hallucination that I have experienced in the past. Does anyone have any experience with such things? I am at a total loss. It should be noted, my wife appears to be very prone to paranormal encounters or experiences. I myself have not experienced one thing that I could not at the very least chalk up to weird timing or my brain playing a small trick on me. I certainly believe my wife, but I do not share the experiences she has had. Thank you very much for watching. That was five true scary encounters with faceless entities. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and sharing with someone who also might like it. It would really help my channel grow. If you have any stories that you'd like to share on this channel, please send them to scarepapa at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for watching and stay safe.